Hi, in today's knowledge base video, we're going to go over creating and approving a virtual card in the TradeShift Go platform. Once you log in at getgo.tradeshift.com, you'll see a screen very similar to this. Before getting started with filling out this request form, I want to draw your attention to the team selector in the bottom left corner. Some of you may or may not have this as it will only show up if you're invited to multiple teams on the platform. So if you don't see anything, just disregard this. If you do see it, click here initially to select your team. If you click, you'll see all the list of the, all the teams that you're a part of. Then just click here, accounting team, for example. And now we're gonna go ahead and start creating the card for the accounting team. Next step is going to be creating the request. So you'll click this purple create new request button and it'll prompt you with a form to fill out. All the information that gets entered into this form will be recorded in the managed settlements reporting. So it's always important to include as much detail as possible. The purpose, that's just gonna be the naming convention of the virtual card. For this example, like let's say I'm creating a P card for the accounting team. So I'll name it accordingly. The next field is the amount. This is gonna be the spend limit specific to that virtual card that we are requesting. Uh, so I'll go ahead and enter in a $10,000 budget on this one. And the budget plays hand in hand with the card type. In card type, you'll have three options. Single use is a one and done card. That means it can be only used for one transaction. And once the transaction is made on that card, the card deletes itself so it can't be used again. Multiple use is still a finite budget, but allows for multiple transactions. In this example, I would have $10,000. Every transaction will eat away from that $10,000. And once there's no budget left, then the transactions start declining. The final card type is the subscription style card. And this will give you a little bit of flexibility with the budget. You'll see I now have a frequency field. So now this $10,000 can replenish at a frequency of my choosing, whether I want to be a $10,000 daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annual budget. Notably, this will replenish on the day from the card it was created. So if I'm creating it today on April 2nd, it's going to replenish on the second of every month to go. The next field here is the expiration date on the card. This can be adjusted up to four years out into the future, but the default is one year from today. You can also move up the expiration date to make it expire sooner rather than later. The comments field is totally optional. It's just another way for you to add a little bit more color into your request. And again, that will get carried over into the reporting. The next two fields you see here may or may not be implemented on your account. These are customizable coding lists that we can set up. So if you see them, you will have to make a selection. So for my department, I'm just gonna choose my department. On the accounting codes, uh, this card is gonna be not applicable, so I'll just not applicable. Make my selections and move on. When I click submit request, whoever is set up as my default approver will receive an email saying that I've requested a card. In this case, I'm set up with self approval, so you'll note that this request just popped up here in my own approvals bin. To approve a request, the approver will go to approvals and simply click create card in this approval screen. You can review all the parameters that were entered in and under the parent card is where you're choosing which physical card you want this virtual card to tie back to. If all looks good, go ahead and click create card. That will trigger another email to be sent to the requester, letting them know that their virtual card has been approved. Once a virtual card is approved, it shows up in the requester's wallet. Once the card is in the wa wallet, it looks, feels, acts just like a regular credit card would. You see a unique card number that you can copy and paste along with its own security code and expiration date to use for any of your online or over the phone transactions. To see the settlements made on a particular card or cancel a card, you can simply click into the card with this arrow here and it'll populate a list of all transactions made on that virtual card as well as the cancel card option here in the bottom corner.